good to be back with you. And I'd like to spend a few minutes answering a question I get asked surprisingly often. I'm not sure why, but people ask this all the time. Can you shoot a payload into orbit? Rockets are big and they're delicate and they're expensive and they blow up sometimes and they're just difficult to work with a lot of the time. Wouldn't it be nice if we could just make some tremendous like gun that would just shoot a, a satellite or some sort of payload into orbit? Can you shoot a payload into orbit? All right, there you have it. Well, maybe we should go into more detail. So, no, you can't shoot a payload into orbit. It's too bad because it seems like a nice idea. It seems like it ought to work, but it's not going to. And here's why. There are, when you're in orbit, when you've got a mass in orbit, it has a phenomenal amount of energy, kinetic energy and potential energy. To shoot a payload into orbit, you had to give it not only the sum of those two, but an additional measure of energy to account for all the drag, that all the energy you're going to lose trying to get through the atmosphere. And we can make some, some simple estimates of what that might be like. Um, the numbers we want to work with, there's, this is, I'm going to write, Ke over m, that's kinetic energy per unit mass, okay? That's if you have a, a mass of one kilogram. That's one half, uh, not mv squared, but v squared. V's, V's orbit is uh, if you're in a if you're in a low Earth orbit, about 400 kilometers, 250 miles, pretty much. We figured out in an earlier video that's about 7,700 meters per second, which is really trotting right along. And uh, so Ke per unit mass in low Earth orbit is let's see, 22965. 2.965 times 10 to the seventh meter. Oops, not meter. It's Newton meters per kilogram. Newton meters per kilogram. That's the amount of kinetic energy per kilogram. Okay. Now the other one, I want potential energy per unit mass is G times the mass of the Earth over R, where R is the, the radius of the orbit. So if this is the Earth, and you're in orbit around it here, and there's going to be a satellite there, there's this path around the Earth, okay, that's R, that is H, that's the height of the orbit, which for us is 400 kilometers, okay? So there's that number, this is, remember, G is the universal gravitational constant, that is not the acceleration of gravity. So that's 6.6741 times 10 to the minus 11 meters cubed per kilogram second squared. Kind of odd units, but there it is. Okay? If you put all those numbers in, this turns out to be, make sure I get this right, 5881. meters per kilogram. So we've got to add those two up. The, the sum of those two is the kinetic energy you'd have to have at the surface uh, in, order, uh, in the form of kinetic energy to get to that orbit. And that's if there was no air. There's no air slowing you down. Well, how are we going to do this? We got to have that much at least, but we're going to lose a fair amount trying to get through the atmosphere. Let's say we're going to lose 25 percent. Okay. If we lose 25% of our uh, energy, or we need an, uh, not that we lose 25%, we need an additional 25% to get through the atmosphere. Well, let's see, one half V launch, okay, at our launch velocity, is going to have to equal, uh, let's see, 1.25, get this right here. Those two numbers there and there go right there. I'm going to add 25% to it just as a guess that that's how much additional mass I'm going to need to punch through the atmosphere. And there's my uh, kinetic energy I'm going to need at the ground, right? So that's Ke over, you know, and that's at launch. Not lunch, launch. All right, so if you work all that out, 
VL turns out to be 14870.4. meters per second. Is that a big number? That's almost 15 kilometers per second. Whoa, that's like 9 or 10 miles a second. Okay, so here's what's going to happen. When your projectile comes out of the barrel and hits the atmosphere going that fast, what do you think aerodynamic heating is going to do? My guess is your projectile is going to be a plasma very briefly. There's even a more fundamental problem than that, though. It'll melt as soon as it hits the atmosphere. And that's if you could get it going this fast. The other one is, what's the barrel going to look like? Well, let's try that. Let's, let's assume I've got some mountain somewhere. And there's my mountain, OK? And there's. Okay, it looks like a witch's hat, but there you go. Um, let's assume this thing is, what did I finally decide here, um, about uh, 12,000 feet high, so 30, well, I'll just, I'll, I did it in feet, 3,657 meters. Okay, sorry guys, I know that's not a round number. I work in meters, but I still think in, in English units, that's actually 12,000 feet. And let's say this is 45 degrees, okay? So I've got a barrel going all the way up this mountain, okay? And then it's going to, there's the explosion out the barrel, and there's my satellite coming out. What kind of accelerations does that see? Well, if I figure out the length of the barrel, okay, the length, is 5173 pretty much. Okay, so the barrel is five kilometers long. Okay, go ahead and make one of those. Call up your local machine shop and tell them you need a barrel five kilometers long and oh by the way it has to be big enough you can put a satellite down it. Alright, that boy there's a there's a wake up call for you in the machine shop. Um, so last thing we need to know is what are the what's the acceleration? Well, there's an expression that we use in uh, rigid body dynamics a lot. Looks like this. All right, and this is the final velocity, initial velocity. There's the acceleration. There's the length. Well, the initial velocity is zero, and we're going to assume constant acceleration up the barrel. Is it really constant? I don't know, but I got to assume something, or I'm not going to get an answer. So let's assume it's constant. If you work that out, I'm sorry, work the acceleration out, okay, the acceleration turns out to be, oh, I love this, 21374, 21375 pretty much. Two one three seven five meters per second squared. Was that a lot? Well, 1g is 9.81 meters per second squared. That works out to, let's see, 2180 g's. 2180 times the acceleration of gravity. Well, let's see. A typical rocket exerts 3 to, three to 8, probably, g's on a payload. A human being can withstand 6 or 8, pretty much. There's 20, almost 2,200 Gs. So not only does your payload have to be able to withstand hitting the atmosphere like Mach 44, it also has to be able to withstand going up the barrel at an acceleration of 2,200 Gs. <sighs> okay, this isn't going to work. Satellites are sometimes so frail they can't support their own weight on Earth because it's so expensive to get them there and they're built so lightly. Um, these two numbers are just a deal breaker. You can't punch a payload through the atmosphere at, uh, what did we decide that was? Uh, 14,870 meters per second. And you can't make a payload that will uh, withstand that many Gs 
and still function as a satellite when it gets to orbit. It's too bad. I know it's. I, I, I know it seems like it ought to work, but it just isn't going to happen. So there you go. Sorry, I don't have better news for you, gang. Um, I hope this helps, and I'll see you next time. Can you shoot a payload? Can you shoot a payload into orbit? No. Eh, that's not gonna work.